we can see that it maneuvers in ways that uh, rocks do not. We can see some artificial lights coming from it, or we can detect a radio signal from it. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of ways by which you, you realize something is technological. We haven't seen that yet. It came from beyond our solar system, a mysterious wanderer streaking through the cosmic dark. It slipped behind the sun, vanished into blinding glare, and now it has reappeared. The interstellar visitor is back, and it's glowing brighter than many expected, pulsing with energy in a way that has astronomers double-checking every number. What does that mean? Today is November 1, 2025, the moment of truth for 3i Atlas. After weeks hidden behind the sun, it emerges into view. If its position is off, if its timing is late, if its brightness curve isn't where the models say it should be, the story changes. This isn't sci-fi. It's data, live, messy, and decisive. And it starts with one question, did it maneuver? On July 1, 2025, the Atlas survey in Chile flagged an object with a path that did not belong to our solar system. It wasn't looping around the sun like a bound comet. It was hyperbolic, inbound and outbound. A true interstellar traveler. Quickly, follow-ups confirmed the obvious yet astonishing. This was only the third confirmed interstellar object ever detected by humanity, following Aumuamua in 2017 and 2 I Borisov in 2019. But unlike those two, 3i Atlas arrived with better coverage, more coordinated instruments, and a puzzle box of anomalies. It came in fast from near Sagittarius, on a trajectory consistent with an origin in another star system, possibly ejected eons ago by the gravitational violence of giant planets around a distant sun. Observers called it a message in a bottle, but this bottle may carry more than a message. As it fell sunward, hints of the unusual appeared. The brightness didn't always map cleanly to distance. The coma, the thin envelope of gas and dust around the core, looked odd at times. Spectra suggested an unusually co-2 rich mix compared to many comets we know. Nothing here screams impossible, but together, the pattern demanded attention. And that brings us to right now. As of November 1, 3i Atlas has just rounded the sun, perihelion at roughly 1.4 AU, about 210 million km. This phase matters because predictions finally meet reality. If a natural interstellar comet simply obeys physics, we should see a calm fade, a smooth outbound arc and brightness that decays as models expect. If anything deviates, even subtly, the implications are big. Baseline first, the boring, beautiful baseline. After perihelion, October 2930, energy peaks and then ebbs. The tail, energized by solar heating, should begin to dim. The coma should quietly contract, and the object's position should track ephemerides to within tiny errors. Think tens of milliarc seconds once astrometry locks on again. By about December 19, it's forecast to make its closest pass relative to Earth's orbit geometry, still distant, on the order of AU tilde 270 million km, a faint target magnitude, for mid-sized telescopes under dark skis. No drama required. Gravity alone explains it. That's the control model. Every radical idea will be judged against it. So why is today a turning point? Because the sun's glare is finally relaxing. Telescopes across both hemispheres are scanning the predicted patch of sky. Reacquisition is a gate. Either 3i Atlas sits where the arc said it would within normal uncertainty or it doesn't. A minuscule push on the order of hundreds of a meter per second at the right moment can accumulate into arc second level offsets weeks later. That's why teams are watching three things immediately. 1. Brightness. Post perihelion should fade. An unexpected surge or a flat fade could signal unusual activity. 2. Astrometric residuals. The tiny differences between predicted and measured positions. If residuals jump from milliarc seconds into multi arc seconds and stay there after calibration and bias checks, alarms ring. 3. Timing. If reacquisition is delayed beyond reasonable, whether visibility gaps or the object appears significantly off the search grid, models must be recomputed from scratch. Context matters. Before perihelion, Spectroscopy from major facilities indicated an unusually co-2 rich composition relative to water, a trait seen in some comets, but still out of the ordinary, and a clue to formation in very cold environments. Hubble-based size constraints suggested a compact nucleus, kilometer scale, large enough to sustain activity, 
yet small enough that outgassing could sculpt motion. The Colma's morphology changed in ways that kept dynamicists busy. Jet structure, phase angle effects, and dust grain sizes that didn't always match the textbook cases. None of this proves anything non-natural. It does, however, justify the global scrutiny. And then there's the hypothesis that refuses to die. Maneuver at perihelion. Engineers point to the Oberth effect. The way a small push at maximum speed yields a big change in outbound energy. If 3i Atlas had some source of extra impulse at its closest approach, the sky today would begin to tell on it. A dramatic scenario. A many km slash s change would be obvious quickly. An offset far beyond outgassing could produce. A brightness spike from concentrated dust release. A pivot in the outbound asymptote. A modest scenario, a whisper of V, tenths or hundreds, would take days to resolve statistically, but it would still emerge in residuals. Realistically, comets can and do exhibit non-gravitational accelerations from jets, but those accelerations have signatures. They correlate with activity, thermal models, and spin state in ways astronomers can test. That's exactly what's happening now. So what are teams watching in practice? Brightness curves tied to phase angle and heliocentric distance. Astrometry calibrated against Gaia stars with millisecond accurate timestamps. Fit residuals tracked over nights, not minutes. And sensitivity tables that translate a hypothesized V at perihelion into an expected skyplane separation weeks later. A small V leaves a measurable fingerprint, e.g., Tens of arcseconds by mid-December for tilde 1 km slash s at perihelion, much less for natural jetting, but still detectable with consistent, precise measurements. If those fingerprints don't appear, the bolder ideas lose oxygen. If they do, scrutiny intensifies. This isn't a single telescope effort. The watch is global and layered. Ground-based giants, VLT, Gemini, Subaru, are coordinating with northern and southern mid-aperture facilities to cover gaps. Survey systems feed nightly updates to public ephemeris servers so small observatories and advanced amateurs can join the net. Rubin's wide-field cadence will help flag outliers. Precision trackers will then tighten solutions. Everyone's playing their part. Short exposures to freeze motion, stacks to lift the object out of noise, cross-checks for instrumental bias, and immediate sharing of candidate detections for independent confirmation. If something is off, we won't need rumor. We'll have plots. There's also a quieter alternative scenario that dynamicists are testing. Not a dramatic earthward flip, but a subtle outbound nudge that gradually retargets the trajectory toward the outer solar system. Jupiter's neighborhood, for instance. A tilde 1 km slash s impulse at perihelion would not scream on day one, but over weeks, it would force the best-fit orbit to peel away from the purely gravitational arc. You'd see model families bifurcate. You'd see residuals stop behaving like random noise. You'd see the best solution need new physics or new parameters. If that happens, it still won't prove intent, but it will demand explanation. Beyond the numbers, there's meaning. In early January 2026, a rare alignment will stretch several planets along the ecliptic. Threading through that geometry is an object that formed around a different sun, in different conditions, under different chemical rules. Whether 3i Atlas behaves, by the book, or not, it's already a gift, a laboratory sample from another planetary nursery delivered to our backyard for a few short months. If it fades quietly and tracks predictions, we win. Our models grow stronger. If it misbehaves, we still win. Because science advances when reality refuses to fit. So here's the decision point. November 1, 2025. The day the sky answers back. If 3i Atlas returns exactly where it should, with a brightness that fades as expected and residuals that collapse under improved calibration, then gravity, thermophysics, and jet dynamics keep the crown. If it comes in brighter than the curve, later than the window, or shifted beyond the comfort zone, and those differences persist after careful error analysis, then something new is on the table. Unusual activity, unfamiliar volatiles, thermal recoil we haven't modeled correctly, or a dynamical effect that will send theorists back to the whiteboard. It doesn't require belief. It requires patience and data. Across the world tonight, domes will open, CCDs will hum, 
and quiet control rooms will fill with the glow of plots updating in real time. Large observatories, university teams, expert amateurs, thousands of eyes, one sky. Even if 3i Atlas slips away without fireworks, we'll remember the night we stood under the same stars, asked a hard question and listened. Because whether it stays on script or rewrites a few lines, this visitor has already done the rarest thing of all. It made the entire planet look up together.